What's up guys, my name is Matthew, and today I'm gonna to be recommending you books with LGBTQ plus themes. I have thrillers, I have romance, I have literary fiction, non-fiction, I got it all. I wanted to release this video earlier in Pride Month, June, but things got ahead of me. But believe it or not, you can read queer books all year long. I know, that's like, I know, are you, are you as shocked as me? So don't be too panicked if you only have seven days to read books with gay characters. You have all year, so don't let anyone tell you anything differently, okay? All right, I'm gonna break this up by, that was a joke, by the way. Um, I'm gonna break this up by categories. I'm gonna do the romance first, then the thrillers, horror, I don't know if I have horror, literary fiction, and I have a memoir I wanna talk about. This is my second type of video like this that I've already produced. I'm gonna link that down below. Only a couple of these are repeats, and those are the ones that I'm gonna push down your throat that I think you need to read. But for the most part, these are all new, and I have a lot to go through. I didn't realize I would have this many. I mean, it's like you would think I was gay or something. There's a lot of books, so let's just jump right in. Let's start with the romance. The first one I'm going to recommend to you was all the hype about September of last year, and that is The Charm Offensive. It was in my top favorite romances of 2021. This is Think The Bachelor. We have a guy named Dave who is a production assistant on a show that is very similar to The Bachelor, and his job is to handle The Bachelor. So he makes sure The Bachelor looks good, brings The Bachelor to all the sets and all the little adventures. I don't watch The Bachelor, but I know they go on little, not challenges, but adventures with their dates. So his job is to make The Bachelor look good. Charlie, I believe that's his name, is our bachelor. And Charlie is really awkward, but he's really rich because he invented some sort of tech thing. So he has a lot of money, but he, they're starting to film and it's just like the produ production's like, this sucks. Like this guy is awkward. He His camera hates him. Dave, you need to get with Charlie, make him likable, make these women like him. And it turns into a love relationship where Dave is falling in love with The Bachelor, who's supposed to be looking for a wife, and Charlie might also be developing feelings for him. It is so fun. I loved it. It was a five star for me, one of my favorites of the year. And what I really liked about this book is the depiction of mental health. It goes really into that, and I love how Dave and Charlie both help each other with their respective mental health issues. So on top of it being you know a gay book, it also really explores mental health issues, which is important to me. So this is just one I always recommend to friends because it's light, it's fun, but also tackles those, you know, important topics you wanna to talk about. So if you're looking for a cute, cute romance, I would definitely recommend The Charm Offensive. If you're looking for kind of a smutty male male romance, I would recommend the Him hockey series. I actually don't have that book so because I let a friend borrow it, but I have the sequel, Us, which I have not yet gotten to. But really it's about two guys named Ryan and Wes, and they were best friends when they were younger. Something awkward happened when they were younger and they kind of stopped being friends, but they run into each other at this hockey conference or hockey a conference. I don't know, what do you, whatever you call it when hockey people play. Hockey game, hockey match, whatever. Um, they meet up and they realize, oh, like we need to talk about what happened and they start becoming friends again. They start working at a summer camp together. It's really just their relationship and how that involves. It's a series, I think there's three in the whole series so far, very smutty. So Arena Bowen and Elle Kennedy are known for their smut scenes. So if you're looking for some hot, hot sex scenes, I recommend them in general, but if you're looking for male, male smut scenes with some good love involved, and I'm not a hockey person. I don't know, is that shocking that I don't, I'm not into hockey? But I still really love the book and I love the characters. So if you're looking for something a little light, nothing too serious, but with a little bit of smut, I would definitely recommend, the first book is called Him, this is the sequel, and just them in general if you're looking for smut, because they know how to write smut. If you're looking for a female-female romance, one I recommend is Tell Me How You Really Feel. This is a young adult book that I actually liked, and if you've been watching my videos regularly, you know I'm really not that big of a fan of young adult books. I'm usually bored, but this one was done really well, and I gave it four stars. I enjoyed it. It's about a girl named Sana and Rachel, and Sana is like this cool popular girl, and Rachel's kind of, you know, more into film and not really into the whole popular scene. And Santa acts, I'm probably saying her name wrong, asks out Rachel. And Rachel thinks that Santa's like making fun of her. Like, why are you asking me out? That's, you're just being a bully. And so they don't really like each other. And it's like kind of like, it, this is a hate to love. And both of the girls are very ambitious, trying to get into the good colleges, NYU, Columbia, wherever that, you know, but different things. One's trying to do biology, become a doctor. One's trying to get into film school, become a director. And they get put on a project together by their teacher. So they're forced to work together, even though they don't like each other. 
and they might realize that, oh wait, maybe it's been a miscommunication and I'm judging a book by their cover. But this is probably one of my favorite female, female romances. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't read a bunch of them, but I'm trying my hardest to read more. So if you have more recommendations, I have a few more in here, but if you have any female, female romances that you think I would like, preferably not young adult, because as you guys know, I'm not a big young adult fan. But this one was one that was done really well and I definitely recommend it. All right, the next book I'm gonna recommend, it was in my last video, but I'm gonna talk about it again because it is my favorite book with transgender representation, and that is Birthday. Birthday is one of the three books that has made me cry, and it's very hard to make me cry. This book is beautiful, so well done. It's about two friends. In each chapter, we're getting to see their birthday because they share a birthday. So we're seeing them when they were young, all the way up to high school, just what happens on their birthday each year. So you're really just getting a glimpse of one day each year. And Morgan is dealing with her identity crisis, gender identity, and we're getting to learn about that process and how their friendship with um, Eric is, how it's affected by this gender identity and just the friendship in this and just the love and just a beautiful book. Can you just trust me on this one that you need to read it, you will likely cry because it's just so beautiful and so well done. What else can I say about this book? Two best friends, a shared birthday spanning six years. It's been over a year since I've read this book, so I'm trying to figure out what else I can tell you. Yeah, so really it's just about Morgan's self-discovery and how they're dealing with transitioning into a woman and how this is affecting her friendship and stuff like that. But I definitely recommend this book if you want to get in your feels and you just want like a good book that'll get you in the mindset of, you know, what it's like for someone who is transitioning. I'm pretty sure the author also is transgender. I'm not 100% on that, but I think they are. She started, yeah, so it's Meredith Uthon and says she started living her true self in 2013. So I think it's written by someone who actually has dealt with this experience, dealt with the feelings that goes along with transitioning. And yeah, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. The next romance book I wanna recommend is The Place Between by Kit Oliver. And I read this one this year and I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it between three and four stars if I remember correctly. And what I really liked about this book is the bisexual representation for a man, because I don't think you see a lot of books or even like in TV shows or movies, representation for male bisexuals. And I think this book just did a fantastic job with it. It's about a guy named Ned who has recently divorced from a woman. He has a child and he's openly bi. And it's not this issue in the book. Like it's not like, oh, he was married to a woman. Now he came out as liking men. Like he's always been bi. He has a kid, it's just, it's not even like a plot point, it's just a given. But what this book is about is about a guy named Ned, and Ned is recently divorced, and he is in graduate school, and he's trying to get his thesis, and he's trying to get his PhD, but he has to work with this guy named Dr. Charles Henry Abbott, and Dr. Abbott was one of his professors in college, and they did not get along, they did not work well together. But now they're both working at this university and the dean of the university wants all of you know the professors to have a healthy work-life balance so he locks them out of the server he wants everyone you know have a significant other and it wants everyone to have like happy-go-lucky that part of the story I didn't buy that's just not realistic unfortunately ned and dr charles decide they're going to fake date work together to get ned's thesis published so he can get his PhD. So it's really, it's following their fake dating trope and how they're working together. And maybe, you know, this professor he didn't really like is actually not as bad as he seems. But yeah, this is a very cute book and I really, really, really recommend it for good male bisexual representation. The next book I have is a male-male romance and I'm pretty sure I talked about it in my little video last year, but I'm gonna talk about it again because I really like it. It's also by Serena Bowen and Al Kennedy, our queens at writing smut and this is the same has the hot hot sex scenes but also the romance in this book is just so cute like i need to reread this book because i loved it so much it was a five star for me it's about a guy named keaton who has a girlfriend and keaton and his girlfriend are deciding like do they want to have a threesome do they want to you know explore with their sex life so Keaton gets on the equivalent of Grinder in this book it's not called Grinder, but it's an app where men look for other men to have sex and he starts talking to this guy named Luke, but he doesn't realize that he's talking to Luke because Keaton and Luke are both in the same fraternity and they're both going up against each other to become frat president. So they're competing in real life, not realizing that they're having kind of like a cyber down low relationship and getting to know each other. And it's just 
so cute. Don't be concerned if this is like, I just said set in a frat, that it's like a super fratty book, because it's not. It has all the college vibes, which is I love to read about, but their relationship is so cute. Luke is one of the most adorable characters ever, and he comes from just like a troubled past. His brother and his mom are just absolutely awful, and I just love their relationship. And if you're looking for a cute romance, a short read with some smut, this is another one I would recommend, Top Secret. A book that I recently finished, I've talked a lot about it in my last few videos, so I'm gonna keep it short here, is I Kissed Cheryl Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. Casey McQuiston is one of my favorite authors of one of my favorite books, uh, Red, White, and Royal Blue. It's coming out with a movie. We're finally getting it. Amazon's producing it. The cast is out. Google it. I have a video where I actually did my dream cast for that book, but this is their third book, and it is about a girl named Cheryl Wheeler who is really popular girl at this school. And there's a girl named Chloe who came from California who is openly bisexual, I believe. And she comes down to this little Alabama, you know, very conservative area. And she's not really happy with being in Alabama. One day, Casey McQuiston kisses Chloe. And then the next day she just disappears. And it's not a disappearing where it's like a gone girl where there's a police involved. It's more of a, it's not an issue. It's a cutesy, like it, her parents are okay with her missing. It's not a, that, it's not really like a crime issue. So we're following Chloe and two other boys, one her boyfriend that Shara also kissed the day before she disappeared. And these three characters are working together, following clues that Shara Wheeler left for them to figure out where she is, why she kissed them, and kind of the story behind that. This is a hit or miss. Some people are really not liking it. I loved it. It has so much representation, gay, bisexual, um, lesbian, non-binary. I don't think there's transgender representation, but it's just there's so many queer characters and it's just so cute. And there's a specific part of the book I really like, but I don't want to spoil it because once I realized what Shara Wheeler was up to, I was like, oh, so cute, so cute. So for me, this worked. It's a young adult and young adult books are very hit or miss with me. I usually don't like them, but this one did well and it made me very happy. So if you're looking for another young adult, if you liked Red, White, and Royal Blue, I recommend I Kissed Cheryl Wheeler. The next book I'm gonna recommend, I read over a year ago, not over a year ago, but probably around August, and that is The Gunkle. I don't really know how to categorize this because I wouldn't consider it a romance. I would just consider it a contemporary feel good. I ended up giving it three stars because it's just not the type of book that I normally read. I usually, if I'm gonna read a romance, I'm gonna read a romance or I'm gonna read a thriller. This is just exploring important topics, but just not something I'm normally I normally read, but it was still a good book. Let me tell you about it. Also, look how cute this cover is. It's about a guy named Patrick, who is a celebrity, but kind of like a washed up celebrity living out in Palm Springs. And he has a niece and a nephew, and his brother's wife died. And his, br and his brother's also dealing with like a health crisis. So Patrick, the gunkle, gay uncle, get it, get it, takes custody of the kids. They move out to California and he has no idea how to raise kids. He is a gay man who just lives the life of luxury, kind of selfish. And we're watching his transformation of being this kind of like selfish, self-centered person to realizing like, okay, there's life is bigger than just me. I have niece and nephew, and just kind of like his journey of figuring out himself, dealing with his own past relationships, and he also deals with grief from past issues. It's been a while since I've read this book, so bear with me. So it is a good book, but I just don't want you to go into it thinking it's a romance because it's got romantic themes, but it's not a romance. It's really just about a man who is just self-discovery and realizing like, hey, maybe I've just been kind of a selfish person only focusing on myself the past few years. Maybe I should start thinking of others, putting others first. And that's kind of what I took about took out from this book. And it's cute. And the kids in this book are definitely the strongest part of the book because they are adorable. And the banter with um, Patrick and the kids. I forgot the, um, the little boy's name. His name is Macy and Grant. And Grant has a speech impediment. And it's just like so cute. Like, <laughs> like his... I mean, it's obviously a book, but like he's the way he like to talks to Patrick because his little speech impediment comes out, it's adorable. So this is one of those, it's just like feel good, very cutesy, and I would recommend it if you're in the mood for that. It's a perfect book for summer. It has all the summer vibes, look at the cover. But yeah, The Gunkle, check it out if you haven't already.
All right, the next books you all saw coming, but we're gonna talk about it anyway, and that is the Heartstopper series. I've read all four of the comic um, volumes. There's a fifth one coming out, I'm not sure when, and then I've read the two novellas. This is following the love journey of Nick and Charlie, and Charlie is an openly gay guy, a gay kid at this high school, and Nick is a grade above him in high school. This is set in the UK, so they don't call it grades. They call it like levels or something. There's so much in this book that like the UK uses different terms than the US, and it's like, I liked it because I was like, what does that mean? I was like, oh, they're meaning this. Okay, whatever, I digress. Is following where Nick is on the rugby team and Charlie is openly gay and dealt with a lot of bullying, and Nick starts becoming friends with Charlie, and no one thinks Nick is gay or whatever. Char Charlie realizes, wait, maybe Nick is bi, maybe Nick is gay. Nick starts dealing with his own sexuality, like, am I gay, am I bi? And it's really just following their journey and relationship. It's super young adult, so cute, it's such a feel good. It'll make you warm and fuzzy, and the Netflix show I'm sure you've all heard about is, it's fantastic, great adaptation. I will say the third and definitely the fourth book start dealing with more deep topics, important topics, but definitely not light and fluffy topics, but topics that I think are important and are good. But I just wanted to warn you that it, it's light and fluffy, but then it does get a little deep and their relationship evolves and it gets more intense, just like any relationship, right? But yeah, if you haven't jumped on this wagon, I would definitely recommend, I will say, if you've never read a comic uh, of, um, is it comic? I don't know, I'm using the word, graphic novel, that's the right word. I had never, so I had no idea. I mean, I read these books in 20 minutes and I can understand some people being really annoyed that they spent however much money on a book that they took them 20 minutes. I'm glad I purchased it because I want to return to them and I just like collecting them, but this might be one you want to rent from your library because you will read it within an hour at tops because you're just flipping through it. But yes, I definitely recommend this if you're looking for something cutesy, 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 and yeah, look how cute they are too. All right, I think that is the end of the romance section. Let's move on to my favorite book of last year. All right, it's been a few videos since I've raved about this book, so if you're a regular on my channel, I'm talking about it again, you're ready for it, and that is The Heart's Invisible Furies. This is a literary fiction. Beautiful. It was my favorite book of 2021. It was the 2017 book of the year for book of the month. It is one of the best books I have ever read. It's about a guy named Cyril and he is born in Ireland in the 1950s, I believe. And he was, his mother got pregnant out of wedlock in Ireland, like 1950s, which is like a big deal because the Catholic church was so heavily running the country and you know if a woman got pregnant out of wedlock they were shunned and his mother gets shunned from her little um uh, irish village goes into dublin to live then we follow cyril's life from literally conception to all the way up until his eventual death i mean it's not a spoiler this is his, this is a book that follows his entire life oh my god it's just so good it's one of the books that made me cry on the last page the book got me it made me cry we follow what, what's so good about this book is cyril is such a flawed character he's not a perfect person and for me i like reading books about people who aren't bad people but people who make mistakes in their life and learn from their mistakes and it shows how they develop into becoming better people and they acknowledge that they're not perfect people and we, as the reader, can see ourselves in the characters. Maybe I'm getting a little too deep here, but th there's just something just so beautiful about this book. We're getting his relationships, his struggle with the Catholic Church, his struggles with being a gay man in Ireland. This book also takes place in New York. We deal with the AIDS crisis. We deal with him going to Amsterdam. This book spans from, I think, 1950 all the way to 2017. It is a beautiful masterpiece. I recommend it to everyone. Is it a chunker? Yes, but I promise if you invest your time in it, you will just fall in love with the characters and just feel so much. And it is just a fantastic book. I'm done. I, get, I, I hope I sold it to you because I really do think if you're gonna read any book that I'm recommending today, it's this book because it, really, really affected me. It really moved me. And yeah, I loved it. So The Hearts Invisible Furies, add this to your TBR. I know it's a chunker. I know when you see books like this, you're like, ugh, because I get nervous too. But when you're in the right mindset, come to it and be like, okay, it's time for me to read this book because I promise you won't regret it. If you're looking for a memoir, I read one last, well, I didn't read it. I audiobooked it because I like reading memoirs like by audiobook because I, if I'm reading about someone's life and it's nonfiction, I like to hear them 
tell me their story. I don't know, I'm weird. If you're like that too, let me know. But that is All Boys Aren't Blue by George, George M. Johnson. And this is a book about his life. He's just telling you these little antidotes about his life. Some of them are funny and endearing and some of them are absolutely horrifying. And the main theme of the book is what it's like growing up black and gay in America because sometimes being black and being gay don't go together and how the story is kind of like his struggles and how he's had to deal with dealing with both of those identities and how he's how sometimes it's hard to be both and how he's dealt with different discrimination from both sides and it's just such a well done book and I really liked it and it's really fast read I mean I listened on audiobook but I finished it really fast because it's not a long book but if you're looking for a book of just about just what it's like to be black but what it's also like being queer in america this is just such a fantastic book and i definitely recommend it all right let's move into the horror thriller genre with gay books and obviously these are horror and thrillers with characters who are lgbtq so i i, I hate to like put it in this category of being a gay book because it's usually dealing with other things but the main characters are usually in the lgbtq plus community so i think we're going to fall into that i've actually started a type of video that I release on this channel called More Gay Thrillers, where I'm searching for books that are thrillers with gay and other LGBTQ characters because I love reading about those. So if you do have any recommendations for queer thrillers, please drop them down below because I'm always looking for more and I like creating those videos where I read those types of books and release them for you guys. All right, the first book is a horror book and that is The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. This is a book you're either gonna love or you're gonna hate. It's very ambiguous, meaning this book will end and you will not know what happens. You will not know if A happened or B happened. And if that's frustrating for you, I would not recommend this because it, it, it could be very frustrating because you're building up all the suspense and then the ending is so ambiguous. What is this book about? This book about is about a gay married couple and they have a daughter. And this gay couple are in this cabin on a vacation and these, I think it's three or four characters come to their cabin, take the two men and their daughter and say, look, out of you three, one of you has to be killed. So you all have to decide, how, one of you has to, you all have to decide, are you gonna kill the daughter? Are you gonna kill one of the husbands? Because one of you have to sacrifice yourself because if you don't sacrifice yourself, the entire world is gonna end. The, their men are just like, what the fuck is happening? Why are these weirdos are like trying to tell us we have to kill each other? Like this makes no sense. It's terrifying. And it's just following their decision of what they're going to do, the decision of the people who are kind of taking them hostage and just telling them what they have to make a sacrifice or the world's going to end. And that's what the book is about. And like I said, the ending is ambiguous. So go in with that. If you do read this book, please read the author's note because he breaks down everything. He breaks down all the symbolism he used in the book. He breaks down why he chose the ending that he chose. And I really liked it. I gave it five stars, but I see some people giving it like one, like this is stupid. What, what was I supposed to take out of this? If you do feel like that after reading it, definitely read the author's note. Cause I think he kind of, it's almost like he, like he sold his story. I, I felt, you know, up and down about it. But then I read the author's note and I was like, okay, you sold it to me. You convinced me that, that I enjoyed this book. So definitely read the ending. It's very good, very kind of screwed up because you know, it's like a horror book and it's dealing with like having to kill your kids, maybe kill your husband. So yeah, but it's LGBTQ because it's too, gay guys that are married. See what I'm getting at? Like, it's not really a gay book, it's just it has gay characters. But yes, I would definitely recommend The Cabin at the End of the World. Another gay horror book that I definitely talked about in my last video, but I'm gonna talk about it again because it's probably my favorite gay horror thriller is The Brightlands by John Fram. When is he coming out with his next book? Because this was my favorite thriller with gay characters. It is, and it is very gay, like very, 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 very gay. And I loved it, obviously, but this is about a guy named Joel Whitley, and he is a gay man who grew up in this very conservative Texas town. He got away, he moved to New York, lived, you know, he's like, I don't want to live in this little Texas town anymore. I want to go live in New York and live the New York lifestyle. He comes back to his little conservative town and he realizes his little brother goes missing. And the story is just following them trying to figure out what happened to his little brother. This town has so many secrets. What is the Brightlands? There's a paranormal aspect to this book, but it's so minor and so just like doesn't really matter. So don't go, if you don't like paranormal stuff, don't worry. It's a thriller other than like a three pages. You're just following like what happened to the brother. There's, you know, a lot of mystery with the town and I'm trying not to give anything away. 
but the ending at this book, you guys, if you haven't read it, the ending. I, I have never been so shocked, horrified, but cracking up laughing, giddy, at just the craziness of this ending and the just, oh, I loved it. I don't know, it worked for me. I just loved it. I, like this, I thought it was so well done. There's just so many messages in this about like toxic masculinity and other things that I'm not gonna talk about. If you're reading this book and you're like, wait, is this the twist Matthew's talking about? Because there's plenty of twists throughout the book. If you have to ask yourself if this is the twist I'm talking about, you're not at the twist. Because when you get at the twist, you will be like, what the actual fuck am I reading? Like that, that is how like just mind blowing it is. But if you haven't read it, I, I know I talk about this book a lot. Please pick it up. It's a little bit longer for a thriller. You know, you guys know I like my thrillers between like in the 300 range. I think this is around 400, but it's worth it. I loved it. I just love the whole atmosphere of the book. Another gay thriller is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo. You guys kept telling me to read this book and I finally read this year and it was worth the hype. There is a twist in the middle that just, it got me and I felt like I got got. I was like, wow, she, Lane Fargo tricked me and I wish I would've saw this twist coming, but I didn't. And I was just, like the twist itself just made me like, God, you, you got me, got me good. But this is about a woman named Scarlet and Scarlet is a serial killer, but she only kills bad men. So rapists or just evil misogynists and stuff like that. And she thinks, so think like Dexter, but like a female version of Dexter where she only kills bad men. Chapters from Scarlet where she is killing these men. She is an English professor at this university but then we're also getting chapters from this girl named Carly, who is a student at this university. And both of these characters are bisexual and you're just following murder that Scarlett's like trying to protect from, she's trying to protect all the women. You're learning from Carly about Carly's experience starting at this university. She's kind of a shy, nerdy girl and she makes friends with this really popular girl and the really popular girl, something happens to her and we're dealing with Carly dealing with that. So you're getting these dual perspectives from Scarlett and Carly and just that whole journey. And I'm classifying it as a gay thriller because both of our protagonists are bisexual. So I definitely recommend this book. Did I do a good job of explaining it without spoiling it? Let me know in the comments if you've read this book and you think I did a good job. <laughs> I love describing thrillers and tricking you guys and doing <laughs> and like trying to like hide the twist but like naturally so let me know if you've read this book and you think i did a good job of talking about the book without spoiling it i don't know maybe that's stupid but i just love talking about thrillers and trying to like hide the twist from you all right let's keep going another gay thriller is going to be tallowood by nr walker and this is set in australia and it's following a detective named august shaw who has been following these murders of gay men that look like suicides, but all of these gay men have like a cross or some sort of object in their pocket and like a poem in their pocket. So the detective doesn't actually think it's suicide. He thinks that someone's murdering all these gay men. So we're following detective and there's another character named Senior Constable Jacob Porter who lives out in kind of like rural Australia and something similar happens where a gay man shows up with the same little quote in his pocket, the same object, and they start working together to realize like, whoa, who, who's this serial killer? What's really going on? Why are these gay men being targeted? I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving it four stars. I will tell you it's very detective-y. Like it, every character in this book is a cop. And some people don't like books like that. And I get that because sometimes it doesn't work for me. So if you don't like reading books about detectives and cops, then I wouldn't recommend it. But it's a good book if you're looking for mostly gay characters and literally all the victims are gay too. So it's definitely a gay thriller and I enjoyed it if you're looking for another gay thriller. As you can tell, I'm probably losing steam. This is a lot of freaking books. We're almost done. Stick with me. I'm gonna push through it and get, keep my energy up and then just go lay in my bed because I've been talking for a long time. The next gay thriller is The Damage by Caitlin Werher. I don't know how to say that. I, I don't like to classify this as a gay thriller because after reading it, I realized it's more of a family drama with some thrilling elements. So this is about a guy named Nick. And Nick went on a date with this very handsome guy. They were having drinks and he completely blacks out and wakes up in a hospital not knowing what happened. And he was a victim of sexual assault. And the story is following perspectives from him and his older brother, Tony, who's always been super protective of Nick and Tony's wife, who is a lawyer. And we're getting alternating perspectives between them and a detective piecing together what happened and this book explores ideas of victim blaming, family relationships, how far will you go to protect the ones you love, 
and I just loved it. The ending is one that will stick with me for a long time because I just loved the ending. And you're getting perspectives from this detective who was involved in this case, and he kind of figured out that like maybe what they all thought happened didn't actually happen. That's all I'm gonna say with that. But it's very good. Don't go into it thinking that it's like this intense thriller with a bunch of crazy twists. There are some twists, but it's more of a family drama and dealing with you know, being a victim of sexual assault, dealing with people not believing you, people saying that, you know, you asked for this sexual assault, but coming from, it at, from a gay man, a gay man is the one who's being sexually assaulted. So it's a very good book. I gave it four stars and I reviewed it in one of my gay thriller blogs, but this is one that I highly recommend. I remember it being a debut book and it's very well written. So I would definitely recommend The Damage. The last book I'm gonna to recommend to you is a very popular book. Most of you probably already heard about it, but I'm gonna talk about it anyway. And that is Razor Blade Tears. This was one of my favorite books of 2021. And this is about two ex-cons named Ike and Buddy Lee. And Ike is black and Buddy Lee is white. And their children are gay and were married or like in a very serious relationship. But both of these men didn't really support their son's lifestyle. And they kind of avoided their sons and you know, they didn't really approve of it, kind of ignored it, wasn't really involved in their life. But then the book opens up with their sons being like brutally murdered. And both of these men are, you know, what revenge, like what, who killed their kids? Why did their kids get killed? And through the book, we're learning about their self-discovery of, you know, why were we so anti our sons, you know, being gay? Or, and why did we have such a big, you know, anti feelings for this? And then they wish they could take it back and have a relationship with their kid because their kids are now dead. And they just regret and dealing with their regret and dealing with their coming of understanding of, their bigotry and how it's really affected their relationship with their kids. And it's just a beautiful story. I would say the first three fourths of the story is a little bit on the slower end. And the last fourth is a little bit more fast paced, thrilling. It also explores topics of how both Ike and Buddy Lee are ex-cons, but because Ike is black, he has such a difficult time, you know, he has to be much more careful than Buddy Lee, especially with dealing with cops because he's a black man and he has, it's just a different than someone who is white. So it also explores topics like that. It's a very good book. It was a five star book for me. I highly, highly recommend it. But just know that it can be a little slow at first and then it picks up towards the end. I think I went through all of them. I'm exhausted. Are you guys exhausted? Thank you guys for watching. Um, I just wanna say that like describing all these books, talking about all of them, I hope I used pronouns correctly. I hope I described things in a way that wasn't offensive. As, as, as always, even as a gay man, I'm still learning. And sometimes I say things or don't say things correctly. And I don't, it doesn't come from a place of bigotry or hatred, obviously. If I do, please leave it, you know, let me know in the comments nicely. Don't attack me in the comments. But I hope I did a good job of explaining this and used everything I was saying correctly. I'm not meaning to offend anyone. But let me know if I did anything wrong or did anything that was offensive. I'm trying my hardest. I'm living and learning. But thank you guys for watching. And I will see you guys in another video soon. Stay